Okay, before I start this part officially, I just want to add in a DVD that I missed for my Adult Swim section part 3, I think. And it is Tim and Eric, awesome show, great job. Scott, ScottyBoy292, reminded me, he was like, didn't you buy Tim and Eric? I'm like, damn, I forgot to, as you know, that part, my Adult Swim part got deleted, I had to refilm it. This got left out of the refilming part. But yes, I did buy it. I first heard about it three scott actually he he thought it was good he bought it and i watched a few sketches and i thought i'd buy it it's the only region 2 adult swim dvd i own it's very good it's um it's like a sketch show it's completely random it's some of the randomest shit i've ever seen and i watched some random shit the episodes are only like 10 minutes long um it says here the series is glued together with retro cool graphics and peppered with a-list cameos from stars we can't mention due to Due to contractual reasons, except Superbad's Michael Sarah, who appears as Kitty Catman, as well as a hypnotic lineup of cult US cable TV eccentrics. It's really good. It's, uh, like I said, completely random. The total running time for this, which is season one, is only 115 minutes, so you could watch it all in one hit. For me, it's just a bit too random to do that, but it is very good. I think I've only got three episodes I haven't watched. I don't know why I haven't. I watched all the others, like, bulk and then I kind of stopped so it's just a disc here it's got this random quote from someone called Adam Buxton from BBC Six Music I'd take Tim and Eric over Gavin and Stacey any day how random is that quote like like this is anything like Gavin and Stacey it's completely bizarre that he would even say that I mean at least mention some other sketch show so yes, there you are Scott, I did buy it. So I was filming this update and I was ending with TV shows and then two more DVDs arrived. So I figured I'd throw them in here since I'm being slow with it. I got Diary, the Diary of the Dead, the newest George A. Romero zombie movie, in the slipcase play.com exclusive slipcase and the still book. Limited edition, although this thing has got a huge number it's like can you see that that's a big number i don't think it's that limited also i got this for five pound in the sale so they can't be that limited i remember scott got this um a while back too and everyone hates this movie or thinks it's the worst or um whatever i don't know i have not watched it yet I did not like Land of the Dead, that really disappointed me, so since people are saying this is worse, or the worst one, I don't have high hopes, but I'm certainly going to watch that at some point. It's got commentary, disc 2, UK exclusive interview from Fright Fest 08, it's got a bunch of features, so, but I really like the whole design of it, so I picked it up, and, you know, got to have all of George Romero's movies, no matter what. And I'm pretty sure this is the last one for this update. The 7th Seal Criterion Collection re-release. It's Spine number 11. I remember the old cover had Death on the front with opening his cape. They, they're they re-releasing most of their earlier titles now in two discs with improved transfer. And this is remastered. Um, I watched this last night. Loved it. I watched some of the special features as well and they showed older footage and um, I think that was from the original Criterion release. If so, they've really cleaned up this picture. It's very impressive. Ingmar Bergman film, of course, it's pretty legendary. It features the famous images of the knight playing chess with death. Death is an awesome character. All those scenes with um, the knight interacting with death are just amazing really good scenes basically this guy here is called Antonius Bloch he is a knight and it's set in the midst of like the black plague it sounds very dark it's and he is um how would you say it? he's kind of battling with his faith and wondering is does god exist and death is creeping up on everyone around him and him 
and death plays chess with him for his life basically and that sounds really dark but the really good thing about this film is it's it is dark it's obviously got that theme and it's really atmospheric which I like but Ingmar Bergman just injects this humour and this life into it it's really engaging and I just really loved it I thought I would love it but I didn't think I would love it that much my favourite character is the squire who's um his name's Johns I think he's just got such this deadpan delivery and the things he says are just so funny but they're not meant to be funny but I found them funny um he saves this girl and he's like He's like, I could have raped you, but he doesn't say it like that. Obviously, it's in Swedish, but <laughs> that's the deli that's the um, type of delivery he gave. And then he's like, Oh, I need a house. I do need a housekeeper, though. He's like, I am married, but with any luck, my wife will be dead when I get home. <laughs> and there's a great scene that I liked with Death. He's like, someone's in a tree. Death's cutting down the tree, and the guy's like why are you cutting down the tree? And he's like, you know, it's your time to go. And dude's like, what the hell? And um, I just thought that was really cool. And I think the reason why there's many chest scenes is because Death is so busy with like the Black Plague and all these people dying that he has to keep going away. Um, and there's these two characters in it who are like jesters and they have a young son and they just bring like this bit of life to it. It just seems... They're so real and they're just like funny characters and they're really loving towards their son and set amidst all this death and I could talk about this film forever. I don't really have a point. I'm just kind of analysing it in my head. And funny enough, I watched this with my dog on my lap and he sat and like watched the whole thing. I don't know if it's because it's in black and white. I think dogs see in black and white, or is that a myth? I don't know. But he was loving it. Gets his seal of approval. It's got a proper booklet, so that's always win. It smells. I love new book smell, but this has kind of got a weird smell. I love that image. Criterion, do me well with books. Antonius Block. I noticed the DVD has a dub as well on it, so I thought I would check that out just to see what it was like. Sub over dub every time, come on now. But I thought it would be funny to check it out and just no, no. Do not watch this film with a dub. Seriously. Don't watch any film with a dub. Unless you're doing it for a joke. So two discs, um, Criterion, the Benjamin Button discs were like this as well, so I guess most of the time they're going with those, but that's cool. Load of special features. I've watched some of them. I watched it's got an introduction by Bergman, which was also on the Fanny and Alexander DVD. He kind of talks about all his movies, so they just used the seventh seal version of that. It's got audio commentary by Bergman expert. Someone screaming next door. Weird. <laughs> um Expert Peter Cowie. Cowie. Um, I haven't heard that but there's an afterword that he an interview on here that I watched that was very interesting 1989 tribute to Bergman by Woody Allen I watched that that's always good he actually did like a parody of death in one of his movies didn't he I know he's a big Bergman fan that was good it's always good hearing from Woody Allen trailer optional English dub soundtrack and new improved English subtitles, yay! I rambled on a lot more than I thought I would on that. But that's probably my favourite of what I've bought this update. Anyway, if you watched all the parts, thank you very much for sticking with it. And stay tuned for more. Bye!